Hey folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farm Manager. To en Farm Manager? This isn't Farm Manager. This is Farming Simulator. Farm Manager is a whole different game. I got a little bit confused there. I was just thinking about Farm Manager. I was actually um, looking at something to do with Farm Manager only just before I started recording this. Um, and so, so now I'm confused. I'm also a bit confused as to why I've got this bit of grain on the end of the field. This, this doesn't make much sense to me. I, I do not understand why I can't harvest this little bit of grain here on the end of the field. What is wrong with harvesting the piece on the end? Apparently we're not allowed to do that. Oh well. Right, well we'll leave that one go and we'll bring this one up here. So that one can start down there. I've just logged into the game and I'm just sort of putting things going. We're still in Euros. We should not be in Euros either. You can see that we're, we're literally just carrying on from where we left off. So, yeah, we do want kilometers. We don't want pounds. We want dollars. There we go. So we take that one and then we can go through. We don't want that one. This one right here. Start that bad boy up. We've got the course running. And I just want to go... Oh, no, before I do that, I want to go here. Find combine. And then I want to go... The 9490, that is the combine that we're looking for. And then I want to go to... What do I want to do? I don't actually want to put it from here. I want to have it so that it takes... Oh no, it's barley again. It is barley again, so it's the same course that we're doing right now. So I do indeed just want to go drive course. Like that. No combine in reach. There will be soon. I'm assuming it's saying no combine in reach because the combine that we're using has currently... Let me just go back through. Yeah, the combine we're using is currently that way in the field. So I am hoping that it will let it... It will allow the tractor to come up through um, and, and deal with that in a minute. So we will come down through here. We've got our water there for the sheep. The sheep have been dealt with. We've fed the sheep. The cows have all been dealt with. This tractor here needs to be set up in a minute, but I'll set this one going first. And we're just using the standard hired help on here. We've left a little piece over there. That's where the, the field didn't quite sort of match up. So I'll bring this one up here and set the standard hired help going. Should just be standard hired help. Yes, it is. Perfect. And then if I go back through the machinery to this one, I can then start this bad boy up here. And then I go like that. And the course should just be right where the course already is but i will go here first and i will go down through and i will select the john deere 8820 and we go there and we go drive course so this one is looking like it's just going to go straight off and empty this load it's not going to hang around um and there is the two little tiny trees that we weren't able to do anything about so we'll have to deal with them later on right helper q has an early full grain tank but that one will have to wait because where are you going Oh, he's come up onto the course here. And now he's reached the edge of the course. Oh, now he's going to drive the course and he's going to go and tip the tractor out. And then when he's done that, he'll come back and he will empty out that tractor. The one that's nearly full is not this one, actually. It's the Fent. So I'm hoping that if we go to the Fent, the, this one is going up across. And we are on our way up. Excellent. Okay, so... Everything is working exactly as it should for the harvest. So our next task is to get the potatoes harvested. And in order to be able to do that, we're going to need to speed up time. We're, everything is working fine for us at the moment. So we're just going to go and we're going to look in here. We're going to go to growth. And you can see right there that we are not yet ready to harvest these potatoes. And they've got a little ways to go before they are actually ready for harvesting. Can't harvest them yet. So if we just keep that on fast forward on time, I was just thinking we want we could go and hire the uh, go and lease the machine ready, but we're not going to have that available yet um, because you know, obviously we're we're fifty grand in the hole and that's not really going to help us. So what we'll do instead is this tractor here. Now I got this wrong last week. I said that I one of the tractors was more powerful than the other, and uh, I got it the wrong way round. So. Let's just have a look through at our two John Deere tractors here a minute. And where are they? Right, we've got... Here we have the 6R series, which is 245 horsepower. 
And then we've got that one, which is 209 horsepower. I think maybe I looked at the kilowatts on one of them and the horsepower on the other one, which is why I think I, what I did was I said 210 horsepower on that one. And then this one here, I said 180 horsepower instead of, and I read the kilowatt instead of the horsepower. I should have been looking at that one. So yeah, the 6R series is the more powerful tractor, which is this one right here. We put the other one on the mowers. Uh, well, we did actually end up swapping them over because I wanted the more powerful one on the mowers. Um, I ended up getting the wrong one for that. We ended up putting the more powerful tractor here on the grain cart and the other one on the mowers. One thing we need, to, let's just check a minute. Potato harvesting in here, what horsepower, this requires 150 horsepower. So our tractor that we've got, a, well, actually we can use, a, we could use one of the Star of ones. Uh, this is 180 horsepower, that one is. So we could just use a Star of horse, we could use a Star of tractor to pull the roper. And I'd actually be quite happy with that. I think that would be quite a good one to use. Um, we are currently using the other vehicles elsewhere how much is this one gonna be 10 grand to lease that's not too bad we can we can cope with 10 grand to lease so the tasks that we've got to do tasks that I would like to do before we finish this series there are a couple we want to do the potato harvest the potato harvest I figured was quite an important one to get done because you know we've been talking about doing that for ages um, so we want to get the potato harvest finished well we don't have to finish it we're going to do some potato harvesting it was important to get some potato harvesting done. Then we want to, as quickly as possible, plant the plateau up there and get everything planted with wheat. So we're going to need to just go over with a cultivator. Don't worry about plowing, just cultivate the whole thing, then plant it with wheat. Once it's been planted with wheat, we need to jump forward and then we can start harvesting it. We're going to use our bison harvester and we're also going to use the New Holland Combine from the Classics DLC pack um, and we'll use the two combines together and we'll set up some course play and we'll harvest it hopefully we can do all that this week the final episode we were going to go and chop down the tree over there in front of the house the old house the, the, the big tree in front of our house the plan was to chop down that tree and you know just see if we could remove that tree that was it was just kind of like an experimental thing to see if we could do it and then that's it. That is everything that we want to do. So I'm not going to spend too long doing potato harvesting. We're not going to do the entire harvest. It's going to take too long. Uh, we will do some potato harvesting. We'll take a good look at the harvester and we'll see it in action. But we're not going to be spending ages and ages doing harvesting. Now somebody said to me quite a while ago when I, I think I did, it was when I did the, um, the initial thing for this, um, like the introductory, the, the video where I just showed uh, what was in the DLC. Um, somebody said that the with the Roper DLC, uh, with this potato harvester, they do actually cut the tops on the ground, similar to the Tektron. This one here doesn't cut the tops. You need to use that one there. Um, this one, Harvester digs potatoes at ground. Note that a home topper is needed prior to using this machine. Doesn't say that with this one. So in theory, we should, this one should cut the tops off the potatoes as well. In theory. Whether or not this theory will actually pan out, I have no idea, but we'll soon find out. So it's it's only two meters wide, so it's not a huge width. This, I mean, this one here is only three meters wide, so it's, it's not like massively bigger. It's got just got a bigger storage tank on it, so you, you don't have to empty it out quite so often. So bring that one to there. You're parked up. Uh, we're not going to use that one. I'm thinking that we use the two trailers together and we'll stick them on another tractor so that we can move the potato. No, we won't. I have a better idea. I have a better idea for doing that. What we're going to use... Ooh. I like that it's got it's all lit up here. And it, it's, it's doing it with lights on. That, that is quite good. Let me go through, see how the other combine is getting on. This one is unloading. Late night combining here at its finest. We still don't want that one. No, uh, we don't want that one. Come on, where's the vehicle that I'm after? I've lost it now, haven't I? I went through it without realising I went through it. Yeah, this is the one. Is this one right here. If we put two trailers onto the back of this one, we'll be able to move them quite quickly because the whole idea is that the potatoes are going to go up for the pigs, which is quite a long round trip. And I could set up a cosplay course to do that. I'm aware that um, cosplay would work for doing that. And 
Even I ought to be able to get cosplay to work to do that. Uh, however, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just bring that one over to there. And this, if this is the last week here on Estancia Lapacho, this is also the last week that we'll be using the um, the manual attaching mod. Because, I'm quite frankly, I'm getting sick of it. Because it's causing us a few issues. And having to just constantly jump out of the tractor all the time to hitch things on... Um, is not actually, to my mind, all that realistic. Some things you'd have to get out to hook up. And, you know, so that would be a bit realistic. But not everything. A lot of things you wouldn't actually have to do that. A lot of things, a lot of the, um, most of the trailers and stuff, you'd never, you wouldn't get out of the tractor at all. You back up, you hook it up, and away you go. You don't need to get out of the tractor for it. There's even fast hitch um, for the hydraulic hoses these days. So you don't need to get out of the tractor. It fast hitches on and then that's it. It's done. Right, we got $14,000 at the moment. Just in case we uh, use up too many of those $14,000, I'm going to go right here and I'm going to lease that one now while I've still got a little bit of cash. There we go. Done. Right. Now I've got that one. I can bring that one back in a bit. We're going to go over here and we're going to hitch on these two trailers. So yeah, I... So far, I mean, I like the idea of using the manual attaching mod. It is, it is, you know, there are times when it is uh, suitably realistic. However, of late, I've noticed that there seems to be more instances when it's unrealistic using that one than there is when it's actually realistic. So for that reason, I am going to be removing it from future series. I'm not, I'm not going to bother with it because, quite frankly, I don't think it's actually needed. Like, this one here... Um, it does depend on how the hitch is set up on the back of the truck. It's entirely possible that you would need to get out to set this one. But then again, it's entirely possible that you wouldn't need to bother. And if you go over here and you have a look at this hitch here, I can't actually zoom in on it at all. But you've got like a little lever there. You'd lift that one up now. I'd, I'd lift that one up. And then I, well, actually, yeah, we've, we've moved position a bit, but ignore that bit. You'd lift up that little lever there, and a lot of these types of hitches are spring-loaded. So you lift it up, and then you get into the cab, and you start reversing up. And then when that hitch gets in there, it springs down and locks into position. You don't actually need to do anything to it. These small trailers here... Um, you would have to plug in hydraulics, and if this was an agricultural truck, then you would have to get out to plug in hydraulics. Um, you'd plug in a hydraulic hose, you'd probably need to run an extension hose or something like that, I'm not quite sure. For brakes, um, it's unlikely that you would actually need to plug in brakes on a truck of this size for trailers of that size. Maybe if you've got two of them. Um, but it, yeah, it, it may, it's, it's, really that's a maybe, maybe not situation. Or at least that's what I would look at it as, you know. It, maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't, I'm not quite sure on that one. Right, Helper Q has completed their task, so we will go and have a look at Helper Q a minute. Uh, you are... Oh, you're just, hopefully you're going to go here and you're just going to stop and you're going to wait. And you're not going to do anything else. Um, yeah, you should. Okay, perfect. And now we will come over here. Right, you. If I start you up and I put that one out, I'm hoping that that tractor down there is going to come up. It has done in the past. It's not going to do it, is it? Right, I'll tell you what I will do. I will go to here, and I will stop driver. And I'll get rid of that in a minute. And then I will start up, and we will go flying down, and we will unload the last of the grain. And then I will set this one, just drive course, so that it goes off and it empties out the last of the grain. And then we don't need to worry about this tractor anymore, because we're using some other tractors. As soon as we get to Habas 7... I'm going to slow time down again, and we're going to deal with potatoes. So, we haven't actually used up all that much grain. At uh, money, rather. There we go. Right. We are now at half past seven. It's a good time in the morning. The these folks here who've been running the combines and everything else, they have worked through the night. They've done a wonderful job. I'm really pleased with them. So, you go. And drive now. Go. Okay. He's off to go and drive the course. The combine here has finished, so we can put that one away, and we can fold the combine up, and, well actually, this combine here, let me, let me just switch it off a minute, and then we come back here, uh, yeah, we'll just do it like that, 
And then we go to the garage. Now we lease this combine, so we can return it. We don't actually have to drive it back to this um, to the dealership. They they they're going to come and get it. So they're going to um, take that one there. Return. It's going to cost us a little bit less. And they're going to take that one as well. Return. That is also going to cost us a little bit less. Um, we've got these B trailers here now. That's an extra mod, the custom road trains mod. I can't remember where I got it from. Uh, I don't even remember if I've remembered to include the link in the description down below. But I'm gonna get rid of those. I'm gonna I'm gonna remove those and also the timber runner. So we'll return the timber runner. We're not gonna use any of these um, if for the rest of the series. And because they're mods, I'd like to reduce the number of mods that are currently on the map so that when you come to get the game, uh, when you come to get the save file, it's a lot easier for you. So I'll also return that one. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to return that one. We're going to be using that one to remove the tree right at the very end. Um, but yeah, I'll remove as many mods as I can. So let me just go through and remove a few now. Potato planter is gone. I'll worry about some of the others a bit later as well. Okay, our next job. You're, you're, you're busy. You're doing a great job. Uh, you can stay there a minute. We want to go to the tractor down here. Some, there it is, somewhere. Um, and we're going to take this one. We're going to get this one up onto the plateau so that we can start our potato hub. Uh, let's just make sure that we've got potato. Seriously? Potatoes aren't even ready to harvest yet. What stage are you at? They're close to being ready to harvest. We're just going to have to go forward again. Um... I honestly didn't expect that. I honestly thought that they would have been ready by now. That's ages. Th 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 seriously, that is taking a really, really long time. Okay, let's bring this one down here. And we need 150 horsepower minimum for this particular vehicle. And our tractor here is 180. So we ought to be able to cope with this just fine. Back you up there. And when we come into here, we put that one on. And we put that one on as well. Right, perfect. And we're away. Okay, we're going to go this way round. I like that it's got rear steering on the back of this vehicle. That's quite good. Um, it's gonna. It certainly makes it easier when you're working in the field. So I want to drive this one right round the other side of the plateau, and then we can take it up the little ramp down there. I've gone and returned all of the animal trailers that we had, and we haven't yet sold any of the pigs. I think we'll do that just by going up to the pigs. We'll go up to the pen and we'll sell them like that. It's just going to make life a little bit easier. So if we're going to be doing some potato harvesting, but we've got the luxury of not having to do all of it, we don't have to worry about this little awkward bit that is off to the side, because that was planted by mistake anyway. We didn't actually mean to do that. Uh, it doesn't <laughs> It doesn't look like we're going to be getting up onto this plateau very easily. Uh, that's not quite what we want to do. Definitely don't want to be getting stuck there. How are we going to do this? We, we've got to get up onto this ramp somehow. Time is ticking away from us. We've, um, I might have to go that way onto the field there, I think. How we, how we, why have I, uh-oh. I just pressed escape. This It's done a weird thing again. Yes, the game crashed. I'm not quite sure why. I think it was actually trying to update the potatoes on the top and at the same time is doing something with the course play. I'm not quite sure what. Uh, so I've set this one here going again on the corn, but the little field of barley at the top, I'm now just going to ignore that. We're not going to worry about it. The combine is going to stay there. The challenger is down in the field. We're not actually planning to do anything else with those for the rest of the series, so they will be there available to you. Well, actually, no, the challenger, that's the mod on mod hub, I think. If it's a mod on mod hub, then I'll leave it there for people to use it with the save game file. If it's not, then I won't bother. Uh, same with the well, the Fent Combine. I'm pretty sure that is a mod to use. Um, anything else I'm going to get rid of? Like the, the Massey Ferguson here, I'm not going to keep that one on here because that's part of the... Well, actually, no, that's the Platinum DLC. If you haven't got this map, then you can't use that tractor anyway. Um, no, it's the other way around. If you, if you haven't got this map, you won't have this tractor. If you do have this map, then you'll have this tractor. So that one can stay. Same with all the Stara stuff. That can all stay. We, we, that, 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 that would work out quite nicely. Okay, so we've got $18,700. Just going to go into here a minute, and we're going to go to our potato harvesting. We're going to get that Roper right there, and we're going to lease it. There we go. Right, now, 
it appeared to be around lunchtime that um, it, it crashed. It was just after 12 o'clock. So I'm going to keep going until we get to roughly 12 o'clock. And hopefully, this time, it will do it without too much trouble. We'll see. Now, the big question is, is 12.48. It's gone far enough. Are we going to be able to have a look at the potatoes up on the top? Is it something to do with the plateau up on the top? Well, down here it's all right. And the train here seems to be all right. I moved the train down here because I was actually thinking that we could use one of the new roper machines to put um, the, the potatoes into the train, something like this one. And this one only takes sugar beet, and then you've got the other one over here, which is under misc. Uh, that one there, the, the, the Nawa Row mouse, this one doesn't take potatoes either. None of them take potatoes. There is no big machine. That is, you can only have the small conveyor belts. For potatoes, there's no big machine that takes conveyor belts, and I am a little bit disappointed at that, to be honest. I, I would like there to be a better option for potatoes than those small conveyor... Excuse me. Um, but there isn't. We're not able to do anything other than standard conveyor belts. I don't really want to mess around with standard conveyor belts today on uh, dealing with the train, so we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to leave it exactly as it is. We need to try and get this tractor up there. We want to do this without the game crashing, which would be an absolutely wonderful step forward, as far as I'm concerned. Where are we going to do this? How are we going to get this tractor? I think what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to come up round here, like this. And we're going to need to come over this way, and then we can get up onto there, like this. Yes, we can. Just. So, we can get up onto here. And yes, I'm driving on the potatoes, Just you, we, we're just going to ignore that. But the whole idea today is just to to do something. We, we just want to be able to like say that we have harvested some potatoes. We don't really care that we're not going to be doing lots of potatoes. We want to get just a little bit of harvesting done to um, like have, have a sample of it. We can always go and we can do more potatoes in another series later on if we want to. Um, right now, this is sort of, you know, basically the, the idea. So, if we come up through here, let us see how well this bad boy works. I'm just going to start up, press H. It does indeed chop the tops off and lift the potatoes all in one go and then drops things down the back. We're getting potatoes in here. We get, we we're up to half a ton of potatoes already. It is a very, very narrow strip, an extremely narrow strip of potatoes. But I like it. I like this machine. I like how it's it's operating. It does seem to be doing fairly well. Um, we'll we'll let this one run all the way up. So today we're go we're going to sort of finish off this episode by doing some potato harvesting, and then I think we're going to try to quickly jump forward with getting some of the rest of this done. I'm going to wrap this series up this week, no matter what. Um, we don't want to be hanging around here any longer. We need to get moving to under the hill, and then we can start looking at what the next map is going to be. And a lot of people are still suggesting different maps, which is awesome. I will go through the lists, and I will select what I think are the four or five best maps. I may only do, I may only do three, you never know. Um, but I will pick some maps that I really want to play and then I will put it up for a vote I'm not going to include any maps that I don't personally want to have a go at myself And then we can take it from there The one thing that I don't like about any offset machinery in this game See, this one is offset So it goes out to one side The AI in this game does not deal with offset machinery in any way, shape or form It doesn't like it, it drives on the wrong side when it's doing its AI stuff. It's also rubbish when it comes to turning because now we've driven off the side of the plateau and there is no way that this one is ever going to get that roper back up on top of here. That's absolutely not going to happen. Right, let's, um, <laughs> let's stop that one there a minute. I think what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to try and bring this one up sideways. So we're going we're to have to manually do turns ourselves in order to get this to work. If I can just get it to come up this bit, we might be able to go sideways on, and just drag it along a bit, and then up, like that. There we go. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, I was, I was, um, I'm, I'm 
pleasantly surprised that I was able to get that to work quite as well as it did. So now we need to do a spin round. I wonder if it's going to be able to turn at the other end as well. That's, that's another big question. So we'll bring this one in here and line it up here roughly. Now I don't know exactly how far in it's got to be to make this work. Let's try there. And we'll see if that's in far enough or if it's going to miss a tiny little strip in between. It might miss a strip, it might not. Actually, it doesn't seem to have. It seems to have done all right. So yeah, I, I, re I do appreciate that it would be difficult to get the AI to do anything other than drive on the crop and sort of keep moving. And it's, it's a huge step forward between this and the last version of the game that we're able to actually have an offset machine being used by AI at all. It, the previous version, it didn't work at all. You couldn't do it. Um, or at least I don't think you could. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I don't think you could. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm actually. I, I don't remember being able to use like the potato harvester with AI at all. I, I, I'm pretty sure that you weren't able to do that. Um, so now that I'm saying, yeah, you know, I say it was certainly to start with, and then I start to second guess myself. Um, so I don't think we could, uh, but we can on this version. It does work. In order to get them to like avoid driving on crop and stuff like that, and especially like on the grass. Uh, what you'd have to do is the AI would have to sort of go along a section and cut a line up across the field and then um, work around in loops on that bit. And that would take quite a bit more than just sort of moving up and down one bit and then onto the next bit and then move and then the next bit and move and so on and so forth. So it, it would be quite a difficult thing to try and code in, I would guess. I, I can imagine that would be quite a challenge to be able to code something like that so that's i'm guessing the reason that it's not going to do that and it's probably never going to do that so let this one come on round and it'll start doing the next bit we're probably going to have to help it well there's no probably about it we're going to have to help it do the next turn but see it comes over to here and then it starts on that bit we've it is at least doing some it now that it's got the ai um doing it it kind of um yeah, it, it misses a little bit. It doesn't quite fill the width up, but at least it's doing it. So we got, we're got we up to three quarters of a tank there. We want to go over to our trailers and get them. Uh, these right here. And we're going to run these up. Yeah, so like overloaders and um, the, the automatic conveyors and anything along those lines just don't seem... There doesn't seem to be any options with potatoes. Is this the same in real life? Because I've never really had much to do with harvesting potatoes in real life. So I'm curious, anybody that knows anything about potatoes, let me know today uh, in the comments section. Is this true for real life as well? Um, I'm going to go in this way. I am going to go round the road at least, I'm just shortcutting it a little bit. Um, is it true for real life as well that um, you can't, that there isn't like those machines available for potatoes? There are those machines available for sugar beet. There's all sorts of machines available for um, automatically lifting up sugar beet, and you can lift them in huge quantities. You've got the specialist machinery that we've, we've, we've got two of them available in this game for lifting sugar beet, but there's nothing for potatoes. So is this true in real life as well? Is, the, is it something that you wouldn't really get for potatoes? Are they more susceptible to damage, which is why you can't sort of do that, and you've got to have small conveyor belts and treat them a lot more gently than you would anything else. And I think I've already... Yeah, I'm a little bit too late. So the fraction too late is already gone and dived off the edge. So we're going to have to stop him there and bring it along this way. I'm going to have to do the same thing that I did last time. And hopefully this will work. Bring it over here. There we go. Just get... The, as soon as the machine starts getting up onto the slope a little bit... There. Yes. Yes. Do it. We are fine. We're, we're, ab we're absolutely fine. No problems at all. Nothing nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here. You'd have to go around quite a number of times around the outside edge in order to get this one to work properly, wouldn't you? It is definitely a case of um, potatoes being quite difficult to do up here. I would guess that you'd kind of have to um, manually nurse it through. Uh, I don't know. If you did another, if you did like five or six turns around the edge, then maybe it would work. I mean, yes, realistic. If you were playing super realistically, it would be very difficult to do this right around the edge because of the, uh, you, you've got to work it in straight lines. Um, Non-realistic, it doesn't really matter. But if you, you, if you are playing realistically, you'd have, to, you want to try and work those in straight lines, which would indeed make that quite tricky to do. 
Um, interesting now, I'm, I'm curious if... I know that some of you do like to play as realistically as you possibly can, and some of you don't... You're not really all that fussed about it, and you're just kind of like, um, as long as you're getting the job done, it, it doesn't really matter. I, I do tend to be in in the second group as long as i'm as long as the job is getting done i'm, I'm not all that um fussed about uh, exactly how realistic i'm playing um where are we going i i sort of i tend to like um like going from one point to another on the map i'll tend to take shortcuts if i can um which is, I, I, that's why i like playing maps um well, I'm quite fond of maps based in the UK, but I do quite like a lot of the um, the mod maps because a lot of the mod maps do actually have some very good realism as far as, like, the fences around the fields and everything like that. So if I'm playing, I can't take a shortcut. If, if the shortcut is there, I will take it. Uh, it's just the way that I game. Um, but if the shortcut isn't there, if I don't have a shortcut available, then I won't take it. It's, it's, if it's not available, I will just kind of... Um, I will go with whatever the map is allowing me to do. So if the, if the map creator has put collisions on all the fences everywhere, then obviously I go around and I go properly. And I do quite enjoy playing those maps. When I'm playing a map like this, um, in my own time, it's unusual that I would stick to roads all the time. It's unusual that I would stick to um, playing it realistic when I can... Right, well, I can just go straight there. I don't have the crop destruction turned on. I can drive right across that field. And there we go. So that, that's just kind of my style of play. Um, I'm curious how a lot of you play. And, uh, but like with, these, with this potato harvester, if you were to harvest the potatoes... Now, I know that root crops is not everybody's cup of tea. A lot of people don't particularly like doing root crops. But when I asked you last week, what is your favourite job in FS17? A lot of people said bailing. Um, some people said they really hate harvesting. Um, and it, it surprised me. Well, I suppose it shouldn't have surprised me, really. There's a huge variety. Every single job that is available in the game came up as somebody's favourite task. And one, at least one person, one person in particular, said they really, really love doing root crops and harvesting the root crops and working through them. It's very time-consuming, it's slow, and it's very relaxing. And I can understand that. I can understand you wanting some time-consuming... Uh, slow-paced gameplay, it just, it just kind of lets you zone out and chill, and it's, it's, a, it's a way to unwind. Um, so I'm guessing that uh, you didn't actually specify uh, the person that said this, but there were a couple others that said they really liked doing root crops as well. Do you like to do your root crops as realistically as possible? And if you were to do root crops up on here, would you do around the edge several times, but taking only straight cuts every single time? And some people I know would set up the GPS and they would go and they would do a straight line using the GPS and then they would lift up after they got and then they would use the GPS again and just nudge it round so they got another dead straight line and then go through. Um, I mean, you don't have to do the GPS, you can just keep a straight line with the steering wheel and slowly work your way round the field and do that until you sort of eaten into the middle of the field. I mean, really, you probably wouldn't be doing root crops on a field like this anyway, in, in real life. You wouldn't, this, this isn't really a, a field that's all that suitable for doing root crops, I don't think. Uh, so I would guess that you probably wouldn't be doing root crops on a field like this. Now, rather than us um, tipping off down over the side again, I'm going to bring this one round myself. Spin it round on the spot. And we're going to drop this one in here. So we will finish up a little bit more of this tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure how much we're going to do because there are the other things that I want to get done as well. And I'm going to pretty much now abandon the rest of the farm. We're not going to worry about the rest of the farm. Combines and stuff that you see on here, I'll tell you now, I will get rid of everything that is modded or... Um, well, yeah, basically everything that's a mod. All the mods I'm going to get rid of, all the DLCs I'm going to get rid of, apart from the Platinum DLC, which goes with this map. So all the Stara stuff and that mass, small Massey Ferguson tractor, they will stay. Anything else that's a mod including the big bud and that over there, I'll get rid of them so that it makes it a lot easier for you when you take over the map. You've got a load of animals on here. If you want a bit of cash, you can just fast forward it through one night. You can go and sell all the pigs. You'll make a fortune out of that. 
Um, and it's basically you'd be able to continue on as we are right now. So in tomorrow's episode, we're not going to worry about any of the combining, just finishing off. Not that there's a lot left to do anyway. There's a few patches up there and it's a little bit up there. But the grain is all in storage now, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, so yeah, I won't have the challenger on here. That one will be gone. Um, and all we need to worry about is we're going to finish doing a bit more potatoes so that we got a load there. We'll take that up. We'll put that in for the pigs so that we can say that we've done some potatoes that are in for the pigs. And then we will get cultivating on this field up here. We'll get it all cultivated in so that we can get the final crop planted on this field. And then we can get the harvest underway. I want to get it all planted tomorrow. And the, preferably the combines up here ready to go so that on Wednesday we can get the harvest done up here. And um, then we can go over and we can chop that tree down and then we're done and then next week we go to under the hill we're going on our working holiday we're moving back to europe away we're flying away from south america and we're moving back to europe but anyway that's all we've got time for right now so if you've enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome and until next time thank you very much for watching this is frithgar goodbye and see you later